All right guys, so today I want to talk to you about an extremely complicated topic and I've watched a lot of videos on the internet and people stand up there with a dry erase board and do all these diagrams and <laughs> figures and everything and I'm still confused. So I'm going to attempt to do the same kind of a presentation except I want to make it extremely simple and I want you to walk away from this video going, ah, that's what you're talking about. So I want to talk about the difference between a male maker and a female, female maker ball python. And first of all, let me, let me show you, I actually have a male maker. <laughs> and it, it happens to be right here. So let me pull this tub out here. And so... This is my male Coral Glow. And Coral Glows came out, I'd say maybe 10 years ago. And when Coral Glows first came out, uh, actually, so some guy discovered the Coral Glow uh, almost at the same time someone else discovered the bananas. And, and basically, it was the same snake, and they found it in two different locations, two different people. One named it Coral Glow, one named it Banana, and come to find out all these years later, <laughs> it's exactly the same snake. So, so when I say this is a Coral Glow, uh, basically it's the same thing as a banana, it just came from a different line. And as a matter of fact, I've seen some bananas, and uh, to me they look slightly different than, than this banana. This this coral glow. So so this is a male coral glow, not a banana. And, uh, basically, well, it's the same thing, but <laughs> just came from a different line. And and I actually bred him and had two clutches. And uh, let me just pull a few uh, uh, babies from one of his clutches. So so <laughs> here is one of his babies. And one thing you should notice, uh, I'm thinking there might be another gene in with this coral glow. And if you look at the pattern, it's, it's kind of broken up almost like a spider through here. And it's kind of not really a regular repeating pattern. And then if you look at this one, uh, I believe this is the straight coral glow. And... And some people kind of argue that um, I, they think maybe it's the het pied influence. Maybe, this is 50% het pied, so maybe this one is not het pied. And then I actually had several coral glows, um, basically from the same clutch. This one has kind of the same repeating pattern as the one previously. Um, and let me show you, I actually have two more from the same clutch. Take a look at this one. So now this one, look at this one. So this actually came from the same clutch. It's a, it's a little bit, a little bit jumbled up, not quite as repeating of a pattern, I would say. And then I have one more from the same clutch right here and take a look at this one this one's you know especially up by the head it's really really the pattern's really jumbled up right up close to the head so in addition to all those I actually hatched out one more snake so take a look at this this one kinda popped out and this I believe is the extra gene <laughs> that is in my core glow. Now, I've kind of showed this snake to some people, and some people are like, oh yeah, that's just a, just a weird pattern from being het pied, but I don't think so. I mean, the bigger it gets, the more wild looking it gets. <laughs> and, and, you know, I've seen het pied tracks on the belly, and this doesn't really look like your typical het pied tracks coming down the belly. And this, this snake, I, I actually think this might be a new gene or something mixed in that, um, I don't know, some people say, you know, I, I, I show this to some people and they're like, oh yeah, yeah that, I guarantee that's a het, just a het pied normal. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually going to hold it back and I'm going to kind of play around with it and uh, uh, kind of 
see what I can do with that gene if it really is just head pied if there's something else. I might I might actually try to make another one and then go for the super, which would be kind of cool. So so when I'm talking about the coral glow, the, um, the straight gene, and you're looking at this snake, there's actually something else in there. Uh, it's head pied for sure. Uh, this is 100% head pied. It could be uh, something else uh, that that um, <laughs> that we kind of saw just kind of popping out there. All right, when I first got into ball pythons, uh, the, well, one of the reasons I got into the, <laughs> one of the reasons I picked up that core glow head pie just because I was looking at all the different morphs and I was trying to figure out, you know, what really, what really holds its value. And, and the coral glow pies were kind of holding their value year after year, and they were still a really high-end snake, and, and I couldn't afford <laughs> a coral glow pied at the time, so I picked up a coral glow head pied. And this year I'll probably breed it back to my female and get some coral glow pieds, which would be pretty cool. But I had no idea what I was getting into as far as the genetics of the coral glow. And uh, so, so coral glows, uh, um, they say that um, the, the kind of accepted term is either male maker or female maker. And, and when I first started getting into coral glows, uh, I always thought that if you bred a male maker to like a normal female, that most of the babies would be male. <laughs> so I thought it was a male maker, and that is exactly wrong. <laughs> so so take a look at this. I actually bred uh, that male maker to another snake, and I got a female lemon blast, a male pastel, male pastel. Female pastel, female pastel, male coral glow, male coral glow, male coral glow. So uh, the more I, I kind of researched it, uh, the more I found out that the actual gender ratio of either a male maker or female maker is 50%. So 50% of the clutch is male and 50% of the clutch is female. <laughs> so then you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a minute. I thought a male maker made males. <laughs> so, so where does that come into play? So, so actually what we're talking about is, is that if you breed a male maker to a female, all the male babies, or all, I would say all the coral glows, will be male. <laughs> so if you get a 50-50 mix of male and females, all the coral glows will be on the male side. There won't be any coral glows on the female side. And that's exactly what I saw here. So out of this whole thing, I had three coral glows and they were all male. And then I bred them uh, to this snake here. And actually, I think I missed one here. I think I had two, three, four, five. So, so yeah, so in this clutch, I actually had four male coral glows and one female not a coral glow which is that new gene or head pied or whatever <laughs> the dinker project i'd call it i guess <laughs> so so basically when we say male maker what, what we're really saying is if you want more coral glows uh, the male maker is going to produce all male coral glows and and people have really bred in large numbers and and they kind of have these statistics of, of the ratio of male to females. So believe it or not, with my male maker, I can actually get some females. <laughs> so uh, the ratio is anywhere between 94 and 96% males with about 5% females in the mix. So, so if I bring them to 100 snakes, five of them would be females. Okay, so let's talk about female makers. And female makers are males as well. So so male can be either a male maker or a female maker. So so if you had a male female maker, <laughs> it gets a little bit confusing, but the male female maker is going to produce mostly female coral glows. It'll still produce a 50-50 ratio of males to females, but if you split it down the middle and look at all the females, all your coral glows are going to be on the female side and all your non-coral glows are going to be on the male side. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, well, how do I get a male maker? <laughs> and how do I get a female maker? And remember, only the males are male makers or female makers. 
And and the only way you can determine if 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 a coral glow or a banana is a male maker or a female maker, it depends on the original pairing, basically their parents. So 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 if you had a female coral glow that laid eggs and you had males, those males would be female makers because their parent would be a female. And kind of the opposite is true. So like I took my male and I bred it to females and, and I could bring it to a whole bunch of females and then all the males from those clutches will all be male makers because their dad was a male. <laughs> so basically the difference between a male maker and a female maker, it depends if their if their dad was a male, a banana or coral glow, or if their mom was a banana or coral glow. So, so it, it, basically, if their if their dad, <laughs> well, if the if the male was a was a coral glow, kind of like what I'm doing here, then all the males are going to be male makers. So when I actually bought my coral glow, I actually didn't know if it was a male maker or female maker. I didn't actually know about male, the whole male and female thing until uh, a few years down the road and I, I decided to pair them up. And uh, then I thought, well, maybe I'll just be surprised and see what happens. And sure enough, every single coral glow I produced this year was a male. <laughs> and now I know that that snake is a male maker. But then you're, I know what you're probably thinking now. You're probably thinking, all right, so we know the males are either male maker or female makers. But what about the females? And uh, as far as I can tell, there's not a lot of info out there on the females. Uh, but as, as far as I can uh, research and, and kind of hear from the forums and everything, the females actually still have the perfect 50-50 ratio of males to females. So a female really can't be a male maker or a female maker. And it's kind of the same with a super. So if you bred... Uh, a coral glow male and a coral glow female together, you can actually get a super coral glow, which has two copies of the genes. And if you bred that super uh, to like a normal, all the babies would be coral glow, and it'd be a 50-50 ratio of males to females. Okay, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And uh, if you do some research and you find out, hey, this guy is wrong, <laughs> go ahead and post a comment down below. And I will definitely see it and read it and uh, look into, uh, you know, there's a lot of heated debate on the males and females. And it used to be a lot more heated. And I think now that there's a lot of data and a lot of breeding and a lot of clutches and it's, you know, a few years down the road that people have a better grasp on it. And I'm pretty sure 99% that everything I'm telling you is correct. <laughs> but if it's not, feel free to correct me. So <laughs> thanks for watching and I will see you next time.